Despite being light years away from the beating heart of Zionism in Eastern Europe, the Jews of Ireland were small in numbers, far away from the action, but incremental to the state of Israel. In a great twist of irony, the Israel Irish people are critical of today owes a large chunk of its existence to Ireland. Irish Jews were not some unionist, self-hating elitists like the Anglo-Irish, and they weren't some passive, accursed wanderers either. They became dyed-in-the-wool Republicans, men of action, Zionist visionaries and Irish nationalists. Douglas Hyde remarked in 1931 that Irish Zionists, quote, have more idealism than the Irish, end quote. The Jews who came to Ireland came from persecution in the Russian Empire, mainly Lithuania. They were coordinated and communal. This culminated in an avowedly Zionist community. It became so ingrained to be nationalistic for both causes that there was no contradiction in being a Jewish and Irish nationalist for Irish Jews. There has been a rich history between the two peoples, with much in common, from having huge diasporas, conspiracies that we ruin Protestant cultures, disgusting culinary delights, a passion for complaining, suffering under penal laws of empire, and the ability to hold on to a grudge indefinitely. The state of Israel and Ireland, despite contemporary differences, have a lot of history between each other. To understand the Irish Jews, you must understand revisionist Zionism. It is an ideology created by Zev Jabotinsky, a Jew from Odessa. It is a right-wing nationalist ideology. Its political wing was Herut, now Likud, and its armed wings were the Irgun and Lehi, both underground militias fighting the British during the occupation of the Middle East. Revisionist Zionism was relegated from mainstream Israeli politics by the socialist left. It was disorganized and its optics were just awful, seen as rogue militias, windbags and somewhat fascistic. They did not have much initial success. Of course, today they run the state of Israel, and the left that once relegated them is a shadow of itself. This would not have happened if it was not for Ireland's most famous Jew, Leopold Bloom. Nah, I'm just kidding. Nobody knows who Leopold Bloom is. Who even reads Ulysses? Our most famous Irish Jew was Robert Briscoe. He's pictured here looking pretty damn chad. He was a proud Irishman and a cornerstone of defying the British Empire, a hero of our history and a Zionist. Briscoe was of Litvak descent, which is Lithuanian Jews. Like most Irish Jewry, his family escaped the Tsarist pogroms, which were organized attacks on the Jewish communities, specifically in the Russian Empire, and particularly in this case, Livonia, which is now the Baltic states. Son of a manufacturer, Robert Briscoe would go on to live in New York, at the request of his father, to avoid conscription into the British military. In New York, ironically, he sold Christmas lights. Briscoe returned from New York and became heavily involved with the IRA during the War of Independence, in which Ireland took the armed struggle to liberate itself from the British Crown. Briscoe accompanied Eamon de Valera, who he would be a lifelong friend of, to America to gather funding from our diaspora, which is large in the USA. Briscoe was also sent to Germany to gather guns for the IRA by Michael Collins, one of Ireland's most revered and admired generals. Briscoe would become a long-serving TD, being elected 12 times to our parliament, the Dáil. He would represent Dublin South for the Fianna Fáil party, which in its early days was very hostile to the UK. As well as being a prominent Irish nationalist, he was also a great friend of Zionism's most prominent right-wing nationalist, Zeev Jabotinsky. The political reality of Israel today is dominated by his political philosophy, for the most part. Zeev Jabotinsky travelled to Dublin, our capital, in 1938 to meet Briscoe, who was at the time a Chak de Dalla, or Member of Parliament. Briscoe introduced Jabotinsky to Eamon de Valera, one of our most consequential leaders. Jabotinsky was eager to meet Dev, as Jabotinsky opposed the partition of Palestine and seen de Valera as a thought leader against partitioning of states. Jabotinsky wanted his support. The two argued about partition as they did not quite see eye to eye on the issue. Jabotinsky invoked the struggle of the Irish people to compare it with the Jewish people to little avail, as de Valera was still not pledging his support to the revisionist cause. Briscoe, who was loyal to both men, remarked, quote, that to be present at the meeting between two of the great national leaders of the age, both absolute in their idealism, their courage, their integrity and their human concern, was the most thrilling experience of my life, end quote. De Valera, for his part, was at least somewhat convinced by Jabotinsky. Remarking in a doll speech before a Geneva speech, he said, quote, With regard to Palestine, our view is that no solution involving the partition of that country should be sanctioned in any way. 
He said this on the 13th of July 1938. Jabotinsky gave Briscoe the most important role for Zionist diplomacy, going to the USA. Briscoe went again to America, but for the Zionist cause, to persuade Roosevelt to intervene on the settlement of Palestine by the Jewish people, as Britain was blocking immigration to Palestine at the time. This made Briscoe a very senior figure in the movement. He was also sent on diplomatic missions to Poland and South Africa. His contributions did not end there though. He would advise Menachem Begin, the leader of the Irgun, on transitioning from a militia into a political party. The party was Herut, which became Likud, which has now ruled Israel for a very long time. He would, in later life, go on to be the first Jewish mayor of Dublin and be on the American TV show What's My Line. He has lived on through his son Ben Briscoe, also a TD for Fianna Fáil. Briscoe has made a huge impact on both Ireland and Israel, a man deserving of much praise and admiration for helping to establish not one, but two countries. A hero for both our nations.